What will happen to your charger at home if the manufacturer goes bust? Well, today's video, we're going to be talking about the back of the news about Anderson EVs that have just gone into administration that make a home charger here in the UK and what's going to happen to their customer base and everyone who uses their charger and app. And as a bonus extra, we're going to be talking about which charge companies are the most likely protected from this ever happening again in the future. Now in a minute we'll talk about all brands as essential, but if your company went into administration like Anderson EV, what's going to happen? Well, for this part of the video we're just going to talk about Anderson EV in particular. It was a premium brand charge manufacturer. Very, very premium casing, very, very premium pricing, uh, and it has some very, very lucrative sort of uh, advantages in that premium space that a lot of people were looking at that charge point purely based on looks and it was able to still get that premium value. Now the administrator will be appointed to make sure that they can repay all the debts and sell off the company or sell off the company assets best they can. Now the job of the administrator is purely to make sure that the debt is paid. It's not to keep existing customers happy or anything like that but to try and make sure the brand stays alive during this process of administration they will try and keep the brand's website going somewhat in case a seller wants to buy the whole brand now anderson ev is a premium product so there may be some charge manufacturers or other manufacturers of other electrical type equipment that may want a premium arm to EV chargers in their business. So there's a small chance they may buy the company, buy the tooling and keep the name alive, in which case the app, the existing customer base will be looked after because otherwise killing those existing customers will kill the brand and the brand's reputation all in one. However, there's a small chance that some people may just want the tooling and casing for the Anderson's charger and not use the Anderson brand, and in which case they're just going to repackage it exactly as it is, but with a new name, with their own name, in which case the chance of them looking after those customers, as we'll discuss in a bit, is very, very unlikely. Now let's quickly just move over to the new legislation. And I'm gonna be talking about this because Anderson sold some charges before some of this legislation came in. If you're buying a charge today, it will more than likely could be complying with this new legislation, which says that if a charger doesn't get any connection to its main server, its mothership, the cloud, it will default to dumb mode. Dumb mode, this, this will mean that it will pay attention to any pen fault or safety devices. You may not have some scheduling systems. Some chargers today actually have an app that will only connect to the charger locally by Bluetooth and will work in dumb mode for as long as that app will work on that version of iOS or Android. Now the thing is that most charge point companies have mostly been established quite early on and quite long standing and most of them as we're going to discuss will have value into reselling to another company, a bigger company or some other things that we'll discuss why that's important in a minute. But Anderson's EV charger, if you're an existing customer, is there any way of rescuing that app? And will you default to dumb mode? The big question is, I just don't know fully the answer because some of them were sold prior to this legislation come in, but you'd like to say that any developer who has a brain would have programmed this in. However, I've been reading online that some chargers that are now not getting any signal from the mothership, from the, from the cloud server, are stuck in lock mode. In other words, you can't unlock them. There is some advice that if you turn them off for a good 10 minutes by the, by the socket and then reactivate them, that should automatically unlock them. Now, there's a chance someone might buy the workflow of the way the app works, in which case it'll be a premium service, about £5 a month. But how do you stop your charger from doing this? Think of it this way. If you're buying a charger today, you're hoping to buy that charger and have at least five happy years of no faults occurring, no issues, nothing. And hopefully it will last even longer, which means that when that initial charge point company sells you that charger, they need to make enough profit in that charger to maintain you as a customer for however long that charger may, uh, lasts. Now bear this in mind, Every single customer means that they're going to pay roughly about a pound in cloud fees alone. That means the more customers they sell, the more debt they have draining out of their account for maintaining these customers. So they have to sell more and more charges to maintain and keep ahead. So what can they do? There's four solutions they can stop from this money draining. Just make a really rubbish charge point that fails after three years. And after it fails after three years, the customer will ring you up, you'll tell them it's out of warranty, you'll offer them a discount to buy another charger, they'll buy it, and again, they'll fail again in another three years, and you keep selling. Eventually, you'll get a reputation for selling really terrible charge points, and no one will buy a charge point off you again. 
but it does happen. The second solution is charge for your app. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. They could just charge a straight flat fee. They could charge a free and premium service. And there's lots of app companies that do this in smart home products. And that is a really clever business plan. However, it's unlikely to work too well in the EV industry while lots of people are doing free versions of apps and you probably won't sell very many in the short term gain. The next one is be big and this is likely going to be the solution for many, many, many companies to come. I reviewed a charge point, which was a very small company and they got bought out by a huge electrical company, which makes sockets and all sorts of electrical devices. So I see, and I want to know what you think in the comment, how many companies do you think that are existing today in the next five years that sell EV charge points, how many are going to still exist in another five years? Do you, I personally think that we're going to see a shrink in those companies. Some of them either go bust or be combined or swallowed up by other companies or bigger companies that are from the electrical industry. The final solution is make money from your existing customers. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. There's ads on the platform, ads on the app, and... I don't like that idea. The best idea is energy arbitration. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this and unfortunately the Anderson EV didn't have the special metering inside it that allowed it, which is why it's unlikely if anyone doesn't want the customers, they're not gonna buy it. However, if your charger allows you to take part in energy arbitration events, that's events where the national grid pay you to turn on or off your charger based on signals, you have a charger that has a value to the next buyer. So in theory, a charge company could start up today and have enough chargers out there in the field that the customer's value for turning on and off their charger, they earn a lot of money from that. In fact, they could earn more money from that than they ever earned from selling you the initial charger. In fact, my long-term prediction is that we'll actually see charge prices, char the actual physical chargers, drop in value massively to companies that are want just the numbers of charges out there so they can control the charge going on and off because their value to them per customer, they may earn 15, 20 pound a day every time there's one of these uh, energy events happen and only share with you maybe a pound or two pound for taking part in the energy arbitration but for them it's big big money now if you're looking at buying an ev charger at the moment check out this playlist here this is all the ev charger reviews that i've done on my channel since i started